So that's when the racial segregation really, really kicked in. That's when racism really kicked in. That's when they started having menstrual shows. And surprisingly, a lot of the racial segregation in a lot of these sundown towns were not in the South. See, that's the misconception. A lot of northern white people, and even today, they like to make it seem like the South was dangerous and southern whites were real fucked up t- towards blacks. Southern whites had lived around blacks for, for years. So they were kind of used to the black present. They were used to the presence of black folks, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, there were lynchings and there was white folks running niggas out of town, but it wasn't as severe as it was in the north. In the north, they were going crazy. Most of these sundown towns, these places where they ran niggas out and black folks couldn't be in there after six o'clock. This was in Illinois, Wisconsin, Detroit, uh, New York, all over, even in the west coast, even in western states, rather. And again, the reason for this is because the propaganda about black people start kicking in too. a lot of people start talking about eugenics and black people being inferior. And and again, there was a movie called The Birth of the Nation that came out around 1915. That was another propaganda film that made whites lash out against blacks. You feel where I'm going? So a lot of black folks moved to northern cities, but it wasn't the inner city. Like the major cities were full of white folks. So black people lived in the outskirts of the city. Black people were living in very rural parts of the north. And white people ran them out towards the inner cities. In this book, Sundown Towns, they have newspaper clippings. From newspapers all around the country. And I'm going to read one. This is how open they were with their shit. They just openly said what they felt. It was a newspaper clipping for a place called Mena, Arkansas. And it was an advertisement to get people to move into this place. And they said, come down to Mena. Ever heard of Mena? Come live with us. We have cool summers, mild winters, soft water, no mosquitoes, and no niggas. They would put this shit in newspapers, y'all. They would put this on flyers and pass them out all around the cities. It's some deep shit, man. You guys have to read this book. And people always talk about the lynchings back then. There were a lot of lynchings back then. But people never really talk about why. They give the false consensus that the people were accused of committing a crime. That's not true. Most of the people that were lynched were not accused of committing a crime. That's what a lot of historians say now. That's not the real reason because niggas knew better than to commit a crime against uh, white folks. They knew what the consequences were. These people would get lynched for being in these sundown towns after dark. That's why they got lynched for the most part, just for being in a certain place. This book even talks about how some cities put sirens on water towers and the sirens would ring at 6 p.m. every night, alerting any black person in the vicinity to leave. Some of these cities kept their sirens up to 1998. This book talks about this. Black folks, y'all got to get up on this. Black folks had to come out with a book back in the day. It was called the Negro Motorist Green Book. And this book circulated around the black community. And it had a list of different hotels, restaurants, um, auto shops that black people can go to to be safe. It's called the Negro Motorist Green Book. And they have a picture of that in this book as well. It was some real deep shit that you guys need to know about. I mean, y'all, we got to turn, we got to turn BET off for a minute and start reading this shit and learn why certain people are in certain positions.
and again, in, in places like Detroit, it was real segregated in Detroit. In, in one suburb of Detroit, not a suburb, but one part, a section of Detroit, there was a white community right next to an interracial community, and they put up a wall right between the communities, and they did this so that the white side can get federal housing loans and benefits, while the other side basically turned into a ghetto. The government was in on this too. Black folks, you need to know about this shit. So when people start trying to tell you, well, damn, your people need to get up on it and get their shit together. No. You let them know what the real deal is. You let them know what the fuck is up. There was a place called Levittown. Levittown was a suburban development built by the Levitt and Son family. The Levittown community was basically the prototype for today's modern suburban community. These were the first guys to mass produce suburban neighborhoods. And many other real estate developers, they followed suit from these guys and Levittown was in um, New York they had a Levittown in Pennsylvania they had a Levittown in New Jersey and it was one of the most successful suburban housing communities in the country and the Levitt community specifically stated on their real estate applications that blacks were not allowed it was white only Like I said on the last show, a lot of white folks got these loans, these housing loans, these homeowner loans from the FHA, from the federal government. And black folks couldn't get these loans and white folks ran out to the suburbs during the phenomenon called white flight. See, people talk about white flight and white people leaving the the inner cities and leaving black folks behind. But they never talk about how white folks were able to do white flight. They make it seem like, well, white people had more money than black folks and white people were working harder than black. So that's why they were able to live to the, in the suburbs. That wasn't the case at all. White folks were, giving, were given loans for damn near no money. And they were able to move into these communities. And black folks, even when they scraped up the money, they said, fuck a loan. I just go I make the down payment myself. They still couldn't move into these neighborhoods. So when these Bill O'Reilly's and these Sean Hannity's have this old condescending superiority complex attitudes, fuck them. Let them know about this. You feel me? Now, I'm going to get a little deeper on the next show. Again, the bullshit history show that I'm doing next week, you need to order that show right now because I'm going to talk about some other shit. I'm going to talk more about this book on that but I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of other deep shit that you guys really need to peep out. But don't forget, man, get this book, Sundown Towns by James Lowen. This book is a must read. Get this book today. Take your ass on Amazon.com and get this book. Because right now, again, Barack Obama, man, he's doing his thing. And a lot of white folks are going to be, well, racism doesn't exist. We have you know, Barack Obama. As the president, you know what I'm saying? So they're going to get ready to say that shit. And just because a black man is doing his thing in spite of, we're not going to forget the bullshit. You feel me? Sundown Towns. Go to Amazon.com and check it out. That's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I will holler at you in a minute. <laughs>